fighting for a cause. Nathaniel Sather didn't seem the type. The store does, though. Shall we? Oh, my good sir. Welcome. How can I help you? Good day to you. I see you've dropped your prices. Mr. McRae. Just the man. Oh? I'm in trouble, and I need a banisher. What seems to be the trouble? I'm sure this sounds silly, but I am an educated man, sir, and when I say this shop is haunted, I say it in all seriousness. We've had unexplained pilfering, though that has stopped since the widow Ingersoll ran away with the cash box. But I hear... Noises. I'm alone here now, you see. After the horrors this fort endured, could one of these monstrosities be hiding away in the store? Right. That's uh, a lot. Let me ask a few questions. See if we can sort this out. Of course. Beg pardon. Whose ghost haunts you, do you think? Any enemies? Lost loved ones, perhaps? I'm well liked. I have no enemies here. Not since Bathsheba took the cash box and fled. But I'd hardly call her an enemy. Bathsheba? The eponymous Mrs. Ingersoll, I believe. The widow Ingersoll, up to split her hair. We've had someone thieving our merchandise. The ghost is the final straw. You mentioned a problem with pilfering. What's that about? Bathsheba noticed it first. Cases would go missing. Oil, sugar of all things, spoons. Do you have a suspect? Any idea where the stolen goods might be? Not a one, sir. Not a one. And if I'm to be honest, I don't care. If they've stolen it, it's because they need it. Apart from the sugar. And apart from the spoons. No one needs that many spoons. Bathsheba said she'd look into it. And I was happy to let her. You say the widow took her own cash box and fled. Why would she do that? A moment of madness, sir. Or so I can only surmise. Did you see her go? I did. And not just that, I heard a commotion. As if her quarters were being ransacked. I confronted the thief, but it was she herself. She yelled at me, shoved me aside and fled. I picked myself up and went to follow. But she was gone. I should have a look in her quarters, so... To solve your haunting, I must investigate the store. Bathsheba's lodgings, too. I'd like to do so, with your permission. May I have it? For the store? Of course. For Bathsheba's lodgings? <laughs> well, not for me to say. Do what you have to do, and if she finds out, it won't be from me. I felt it too. It's signed NS. As in Nathaniel. From whom does he expect a payment and why? This Thomas must be a good friend indeed. Nathaniel is desperate to see him. Bathsheba left in a hurry. Anyone home? I'm Red McCraith, the Banisher. Show yourself. I think we're alone. The takings are thin indeed. 
didn't make me want to stay. Who does Duchess Mock think she is? Taking my wares, taking my business, taking my dignity. To hell with her. To hell with Helen Priest. I'll leg it to Boston before I let her take what's mine. When Helen threatened to take her business, the widow ran away. Prudent. I can't say I blame her. We found all we could. Might be time to go after our thief. Mrs. Ingersoll took a car. Maybe you could follow her tracks. Not a bad idea, Mr. Sather. Not bad idea. Cart tracks. That way. Bathsheba must have had motivation to flee in snow like this. Or desperation. <clears throat> the tracks veer to the right. Ready and waiting. They brought more friends. Watch out. Spectre possession. Missing cart. Abandoned. The Empty cash box. The widow Ingersoll's, no doubt. Novices really have no idea how many miles a banisher runs to solve a case. I once met Nero Fox the infamous banisher who solved all his cases from the comfort of his armchair. I should have become his apprentice. Thing is, his apprentice was the one that went into the field for him. A trail of blood. I don't like that. The tracks continue this way. Bathsheba was injured. Looks that way. What with the blood and torn clothing and all. The 
The tracks lead into this cave. Must have been really desperate. Go away, beasts! Ah, off with you! That's mine! Come back! Eaten alive. Hope it was quick. The wolf took a purse. We should find it. I used to count my wolf kills on one hand. I searched the den. But with a wing or so, I'll never again see Boston. With a wing or so. To me. Here's the belt. The purse is with it. Keys. Where do Winger souls, I don't doubt. I've seen this symbol in the mines below Fort Jericho. Why would she have keys to the mines? Mmm, mines. You want to take a look, don't you?
Try this on for size. Hold on me. Watch out. Spectre possession. Get the hell out of there! Spectre heading for that corpse. Dark in here. Here we are. Now, let's find the symbol. Someone's been here already. Looks like Helen found Mrs. Ingersoll's stash. Oil, sugar, salt. Isn't this Nathaniel Sather's stolen merchandise? Yes, it is. Ledger for Ingersoll's store. Same dates, but with much higher figures. Two different ledgers, one of which was locked inside a chest. I think I understand. She stole her own merchandise and hid it in the mines. Then she could expose her lie. Why would she do that? The store and Nathaniel are all she has. She doesn't want to lose them. And Nathaniel can't leave for Boston without his money. Nathaniel broke his promise and doesn't regret it. Skint, he betrayed Mrs. Ingersoll for a couple of Helen Priest's coins. We should go back to him.
Excuse me. This is Ingersoll. That you? I think so, Mr. McWraith. I think so. Mistress Duarte. Dear Lord, you're a spirit too. What happened? I was going to ask you the very same question. We found some merchandise stashed away. Oil, sugar, some, uh, spoons. We suspect it was stolen. Is it yours? I believe it is. Or at least it was. Helen Priest lays claim to it for the company. And how does Helen Priest know about it? Because Nathaniel told her. He broke my confidence. He broke my heart. For the sake of his return to Boston and a life of ease, he'll trample the legacy of those who made him. He betrayed us. I knew what he was up to. That is why I ran. And because I ran, I died. What are you doing here? You came to my store. Then you've met Nathaniel. Would you give him a message from me? Tell him he must stay. He made a promise he must honor it. So, you haunt Nathaniel. But he told us you stole your own cash box. Why? Priest took my stock. All I had left was the money. I thought I'd start again somewhere else. Boston, where it all began. This isn't what you had in mind, eh? I have business yet. You'll see. We'll be off then. We'll be in touch. One would be better than the other, but I'm not sure I know which. Hunter's roster, and Theodore Shepard is overdue. May we talk, Mr. Sather? I'd like nothing more. How can I be of service? We must talk about the widow's accounts. They're meager enough. You surprise me, sir. And by that I mean you do not surprise me in the least. <laughs> if the coffer was full, I'd be halfway to Boston by now. Is that why you're selling your stock cheap? Everything must go, sir. Or I'll not carry this junk back to Boston and the coin will pay my way. Bathsheba kept the money she owes you, and now you're stuck here. Boston no more than a memory. That's it, exactly. Now you understand the urgency. I've bad news for you. I found Bathsheba's body. The wolf's got her. Oh, no. Poor Widow Ingersoll. I so dearly wish she'd made it safely to Boston. Did you... find the cash box? I found something else. A note. You told Priest exactly where to find the merchandise that Mrs. Ingersoll had hidden in the mines. Ah. Now, I have a number of excuses, but I get the feeling you won't be interested in any of them. Nor, to be honest, am I. I did the right thing. Followed Bathsheba to her hiding place, and then I told Mrs. Priest where to find it. The stock will keep people alive. Now is no time for commerce. You lied to your employer. Did she deserve it? Listen. Bathsheba no longer knew what she was doing. She lived in the past, while we live in the present, and the future comes charging towards us. She wallows in grief. To the detriment of her friends and neighbours, she wouldn't give up the goods. So I gave them up for her. All right. It's time. I hear you, Mr. Sather. But I'd like to hear Widow Ingersoll's thoughts on the matter, too. Wouldn't you? Dear Lord, what are you? Worry not, Nathaniel. This is the ghost that haunts the store. Bathsheba Ingersoll. Back to tell me one more time that you're not going to pay me. That money is my husband's legacy, and I shall decide what's to be done with it. 
The money is mine. I earned it. All those years, I stood by my promise. But you did not. You lied about the books. You cheated me. I? A cheat? You swore to my husband on his deathbed that the store would go on. You swore an oath to a dying man, and then you broke it. I swore to help you with your grief. To keep running the store while you mourned. But you did not mourn. Instead, you poured your heart into his business. You won't let it go. You won't let him go. I can give you no more time. I have a life to live. Your dead husband does not. You must let me go. By renouncing his business, you bury my husband a second time. Ingersoll's name will die because of you. It's time to end this. Nathaniel Sather, you broke a promise to a dying man. The man who gave you everything. It brought the angry ghost of his widow back to haunt you. What's this? What are you doing? Someone has to pay the piper. May as well be you. Bill. 